One of the things that we really love to do is to go to a store and look for survival items. See if we can put together a get home bag, a bug out bag with the items in that store. Uh, recently we went to REI. Uh, REI is an outdoor store that has top premium gear in those stores. And I've been wanting to do this for a while uh, to check out what they offer. I knew that we could find everything we needed. Uh, one of the things though about REI is again with that premium quality products the prices are pretty high. So we wanted to go in and at first I thought I'm going to make the ultimate bug out bag. I'm going to get the top notch whatever is the best of the best. Uh, once we got in there and started walking around we decided that that was just going to be way beyond our budget. And so we ended up going through different items that we found there at REI that were more toward the more reasonable prices. So we're going to put this together. Um, it still cost us almost $800 to build this bag, but we've got a really high quality bag. And we could have spent $2,500 to $3,000 to be honest with you, because they just have a lot of high quality gear. So we're going to go through and I'm going to show you the different items. Now, one of the reasons why we like to do this is let's say that you're out of town. Maybe you're with a friend and you don't have your get home bag. Maybe you've flown to a different location and you need to get home. You need survival supplies for whatever reason. And if you find yourself near an REI, you're going to be able to really get decked out. It's just that if your wallet will stand it. But again, these are just different stores we like to go to and find those items that you need. This was a lot of fun because they had a lot of good quality stuff. All right guys, here are all the contents laid out and we got quite a bit of stuff, uh, really high quality gear here. I mean, this is a solid get home bag, bug out bag, whatever you need. Uh, honestly, I recommend getting a get home bag and keeping that because really you wanna get home. Now, one of the things about this again is because it is premium gear, the prices are fairly high. In fact, I just looked at the receipt. It was over $805. So let's see what you get for that kind of money. Uh, a few of these things, honestly, were more the lower price for REI, but still good high quality gear. And we're going to break this down into sections, whether it's food, shelter, tools, I mean, water filtration, fire kits. We've got a number of different items here, and honestly, I was very pleased. Now we're getting started out with our backpack. Uh, that's the basis for everything you're gonna transport. You put your gear in here, you need to organize. Uh, this is a North Face, and this is the Base Camp Voyager. It's a 32 liter duffel bag, but it does transform into a backpack. Uh, this is a little compartment or a little pouch that it comes in. Of course, we even have a little bit of netting here. Um, we're going to pull that zipper out, and we have our backpack stuffed in here. The bag itself is actually part of the backpack. So this is one of those that you can just stuff into the bag. Now this ran $129, which was one of the cheaper models there at REI. Uh, this is the outer pouch that we were looking at, and it stuffs into this compartment. I love these reversible bags like this. It really allows you to have a lot of versatility. Uh, now this big compartment, you can see it kind of opens all the way on the side. This is not a conventional backpack, but definitely something that would be highly usable. Uh, it does have kind of a rubberized coating on it and it's ripstop, so that's gonna protect it. I like that and that's what really drew my eye in the first place. 
Now right here in the back, you can see we do have some shoulder straps and they are attached to the pack and they stuff down into the back. And so this, we just need to attach them. Let's see what we got. We got some Fastex buckles, so that's gonna make it easy. The front, definitely, or the main compartment, definitely a large bag. And there's a lot of features in here, mesh netting and things like that. We're, we'll definitely do a review on this. But this is the backpack. I wanted to get that kind of stuffed out. It's not too packed. I put my jacket in there. Um, so you do have a full pack. This to me makes a great get home bag, bug out bag size. And I like the material. It's going to uh, get that moisture off of it. All the rubberized coating here. So we'll check this out when we get it filled with all the other gear. Now next comes your core. You want to make sure that you're warm. Uh, typically you should already have a jacket but you could be in a certain position to where you're just not really outfitted. Uh, this is one of the REI co-op. It's one of their jackets. It's their branded jackets. And this is a really lightweight jacket. I love this jacket. Uh, but it's made of material that really insulates 14% more than quilted fabric. And so this was really an excellent pickup. Uh, this is great for rain and it's also great to keep you warm. So I, I thought this was a cool jacket. Uh, we were kind of back and forth about coats because they're very expensive. Uh, this one actually ended up being on sale and so we were glad to get it. Uh, also we have a watch cap, which obviously very important to keep your head warm. We also picked up some gloves. All these are REI brand, so the prices were a little bit better. And then we got some Norseland, um, Murano wool socks and good socks are important. I went ahead and got two pair, uh, but you really should have good socks if you're on your feet, even if it's not cold. And I guess this is more toward your cold weather uh, setup, but still, I mean, even in the summertime, it, late at night, it can get really cool. So something like this that's super lightweight would be smart. All right, guys, we have shelter. Shelter is important in the rule of threes. You can live three hours in harsh conditions, and then you start going downhill. Most people that are called outdoors die of exposure. So, again, your clothes are definitely something that are going to keep your core warm, but you need something else. Uh, having a good tarp is one thing. It keeps you out of the rain, out of the elements, out of the dew in the mornings, different things like that. And you can use it for ground cover. This is a large 12 by 14 size. And so I can actually make an improvised tent or just a shelter. Uh, you definitely want to have some tent stakes. Uh, I'm a big proponent of having tent stakes in your pack because you can really change things. And plus, these have eyelets, so it's easy to do. Now with that, you need cordage. We're going to look at cordage in a minute, but cordage should go with this as well. Here we have one of the SOL Space Bivvies. Uh, this is something that uh, I have used in the past. In fact, I actually have a review on this. You can climb into this, uh, and the outside is orange, so you can be seen, uh, and then inside has that space blanket material. I'm not going to pull this out, but you can actually get in it. And so these, to me, are some of the most easy way to be able to carry something really small. I really like these. Uh, but having maybe a little Snuggie or something a little small, a pack would be nice but guys again ounces turn into pounds and so you know the smaller and the lighter we can go the better uh, and then i have one of the uh, ultra seal dry sacks big fan of dry sacks this will keep a lot of your really important things that you have to keep dry it, you know you could throw your phone in there but also you could put in fire starting material things like that and then this just rolls up and then you bring this around and it seals up and so it just keeps everything in here dry. A lot of different sizes, different styles. I just picked this one. One thing you definitely need is some cordage to go with your tarp and your tent stakes. Uh, I was really looking for 550 cord. This is pretty, this is the closest thing, honestly, they had. Uh, they do a lot of mountain climbing and things, so there was a lot of different type of cordage. But uh, this is about a 50 foot strand. I would say that is bare minimum. Maybe 100 foot would even be better. But cordage is important especially for shelter. Water is a major priority. Guys, you can only live three days without water. Most of your water systems that you see, it's not safe to drink. Cryptosporidium, Giardia, uh, chemicals, minerals, all kind of different things are in there. So having a way to filter your water is important. Uh, of course, the cheapest way is water purification tabs. Uh, one of the things about that though is it doesn't take away the taste. It actually adds a taste. And then you have the debris and the sediment. Uh, I really like the uh, Sawyer Minis. 
and this is a water filtration system. Uh, this will filter up to 100,000 gallons of water. Really for the money, the Sawyer Mini is one of the best deals you can get. Uh, it's that small compact size and yet it's very effective. You know, you can use this, you fill up your water out of the stream and then you hook it to your filter and then you drink it with your straw, you squeeze it and it filters through. So it's a really easy system. Uh, one thing I will say is some of these that are sold like at big box, like Walmart in places, they are inferior. They're a little bit different than these premium Sawyer Minis. So just watch for that. And then also you have this for cleaning. So this will just clean out your tube and just keeps your kit maintained. So Sawyer Mini is an excellent kit. They had some bigger sets, some MSR, they had Katadyne, they had a lot of different ones. And again, we were looking for that very reasonable setup, plus the weight is really important. These are super lightweight. And then for a water container, it's really important. You can keep water stored in there. You don't have to stand right next to a water source. Uh, you can also use this for cooking. Now this is the only one they had that was just a stainless finish to it. Uh, but, you know, it does have a stainless top and that's important. Sometimes they'll have plastic here. So that just keeps you from being able to heat this or do anything. But it does insulate and that's kind of nice. It has a little handle. Uh, but it is double walled, so you got to be careful with that. It can cause problems if you heat this up. But having a way to store water, I personally like metal better than your uh, plastics or your polymers because they can break. Fire kit, you need fire. Uh, and so we have some uh, lifeboat matches, and these are UCO. Uh, they do a great job. Go and open this up. And I like this container because it is waterproof. It has a striker on here as well. And then you have your matches and it has a spare striker inside. These are waterproof matches. You can actually light these, dip them in water, pull them back up and they'll continue to burn. These are my preferred choice for matches. Uh, and I like the container. I mean, this is just a good setup. Also, we have a ferrocerium rod, but it also has magnesium and it's got a nice large handle and it has a striker. And this is going to give you tons of light. Now the striker has a little bit of a ruler on it. Uh, it has just a little small striking place here. You even have a small nut driver and a bottle opener. Uh, I believe that right here are some teeth. And you can take this and you can take your um, magnesium and you can actually make this into shavings and make a small little uh, pile. And then you can take your striker. And what you want to do is, is get rid of that black on top. But not bad. I mean, it's really a fairly small striker with a large piece of um, magnesium. I love that. I love the magnesium. This is really going to burn well. Uh, the cord itself is a fire cord. You can use this as a tender. And so this is not a bad little setup right here. And SOL puts together some very reasonably priced, good quality stuff, typically. And then we have some Sweet Fire fire starters. Uh, this is just some fibrous material. It's impregnated with, you know, some kind of uh, flammable fuel, actually renewal biofuel. And I'm not going to open this up at this point just because it'll take away the shelf life. But you can see it's just a fibrous material. A lot of different choices with fire tenders. In fact, there was a ton of choices with fire tools. And, you know, guys, I'm a big fire bug. I love to make fire. I love to figure out ways. And so they had a number of different things. But just making your choices. But I do like to have a couple of different ways. Medical. Very important. Uh, this is just a standard first aid kit. It's actually for two people for two days is what it says. And there's a list of different things that are on here. Uh, it's not really a super uh, trauma kit or anything. But there are some trauma pads in here. Uh, of course, there's obviously a lot of band-aids and things like that. Uh, they had some more kits, but you know, there was pretty much the same thing. Uh, some a little bit larger. I wanted to keep it small and at least have some of the essentials that I need in here. And then we have a compass, which guys, you need a compass, especially if you're out somewhere, you're going to lose direction. I like the Sunto compasses already, and they had a number of different types, but they had a lot of Sunto compasses, and there's a good reason why. These are good quality. And then, just to kind of go along with this, I just have a write in the rain pad if you need to write down anything, you know, especially with medical, what you've done, things you're doing, but uh, having a, a way to write some things down could be important because when you're out there, things get a little bit hazy. And when it comes to light, uh, they had some coast flashlights. That was pretty much what they had. 
Uh, and those are decent quality flashlights. Uh, again, probably if I'd have gotten some batteries for it, I think that would have been one thing I really missed out on. But 465 lumens for 21 hours. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's not a bad flashlight, and we'll kind of look at it. But also, the most important is a headlamp. And here we just have one of the black diamond headlamps, 300 lumens. Uh, it is a AAA, use AAA batteries. But it does also have a recharging feature on here that you can plug that in if you have a battery backup. Here with the headlamp, you want simple. Uh, this does have the three uh, AAA batteries that did come with it. I put them in there. Uh, makes it really easy. Uh, this does rotate. I like that. And I like this really comfortable headband. So definitely headlamp to me is one of the most important lights to get if you have a choice. Then just a standard flashlight. Now this can also be used as an impact tool. Uh, I can use this for self-defense. So got to say, um, I think these are AA batteries. It has a wide flood here and then it goes down to a narrow, narrow beam. Um, so not a bad flashlight actually and has a nice clip to it. Nice finish on it. And again, if I need to, I can use this even as some kind of really small baton. So light, your number one security tool, make sure you have a couple of sources because one could go down. As they say, two is one, one is none. Now the rule of threes, three weeks without food. Uh, if you don't have food, you start to lose energy. Uh, it makes it tough. You're working really hard. And so we just happen to have a great source. We got some backpackers pantry, fettuccine Alfredo with chicken and some Wild West chili and beans. Also, we grabbed a couple of just trail mix bars, and this just makes it nice when you're out on the trail. According to how far your journey is as well, it may be really important to have some ways to prepare it. Uh, here we have just a cook set, and this was kind of cool. We decided to go ahead and get this, um, and this has your regular pot where we can cook, and it has a lid, and so this way we can cook any kind of things, even if we have to make traps and you know have to cook small game. And so this gives us a lot of options. Also a small little cup. Uh, and they had a number of different ones. In fact, the cook sets, they had all kind of stuff. So uh, then we got a little heater. And this is one of the camp stoves. It's a Glacier camp stove. And they did have the fuel to go with it. And so we've got this. We can cook without having to make an actual fire. Uh, but if we do, we can also cook, obviously, this on a fire. So we got food covered. I think it's according to where you are. If it's just a get home bag, it's one thing just to have something like this. If you're going to be traveling for a couple of days, I think it would be really smart to be, pick up some good food. And let's be serious. Who wants to miss a couple of meals? One thing I just found uh, was our titanium spoon or spork. Uh, good to have something to eat with. Much better than eating stew with your hands, especially that backpacker's pantry. That would not be fun, but uh, definitely you need some kind of utensil. Tools, very important. A good fixed blade knife, I would pick this over everything else, but you definitely need to have a good fixed blade. Full tang would be great. A multi-tool is optional, but it definitely will come in handy. Small pocket knife, you should already have one in your pocket. In fact, I would have bought this just a multi-tool, except that this was only about $2 difference. And so then we have one of the Silky Saws. This is phenomenal. I highly recommend these. Uh, and also we got a, a pocket knife sharpener. They had a couple of different styles. Uh, one thing I do want to say about the knives is they had Benchmade or Leatherman, and they were twice the price or more. So it's one of the reasons why we chose these. Now this is called Gerber's Ultimate, Ultimate Fixed Blade Knife. Uh, we have a nice fixed blade. You do have some serrations. Typically, I don't like serrations that much, but very nice, comfortable handle. Uh, has some kind of neoprene finish. I love the pommel. I mean, it's steel, and you can actually use this as a hammer impact tool. Has a lanyard with it, which is actually pretty nice. Uh, and then we have a fire steel that goes with it, and the fire steel goes right here. And so we can put it, let's see, it goes the other way. And this actually pops into place. There we go. And so we have a fire steel or fire capability. We have a sheath, which is actually pretty nice. And it does have a, a top little strap. But not a bad knife. I really like this. And it was very reasonable. Some of the LMFs and others they had there were more expensive. So I just felt like this was a good find. And uh, 
there's something on the back here. Oh, we have a sharpener here on the back. And so while I did get a pocket sharpener, I could have gone without it just because I had this. And so I like this. I really do like this. Uh, a good medium price knife, um, and yet it has a lot of capability to it. Of course, the multi-tool is one of the suspensions. This is the NXT. Um, definitely something that you could really use, especially more in an urban environment, but even with different things that you have. Of course, it's got a knife and everything already on it, uh, and a clip. This actually, you can put this in your pocket. Also, with the knife, and this is one of the pair frames, uh, very thin, pops out little uh, nub here to open it up. Not a bad little knife, Gerber's decent quality, so we've got a couple of really excellent tools. Again, I've got a pocket knife in my pocket, uh, but the multi-tool is definitely something that would be great to have in your pack. Then we have the Silky Saw, and this is the F100 Professional. Guys, I'm telling you, if you've never had a Silky Saw, this is excellent. Great for processing firewood or cutting to make shelter. Uh, this is great. And then it just has a handle, a little lever right here, and you can bring that down. Now, this is probably more of their economy models because the ones I have have a metal piece right here. But I'll tell you what, having a silky saw in your pack is really a great item to have. You have all this rubberized coating right here. Uh, but again, I think this is more of a little bit of their lightweight version. Uh, the ones that I have, they're not that much heavy, but there's something about the cutting ability of these teeth. It's some kind of Japanese technology that will really surprise you. And so Silky Saw, and they make a number of different sizes. I was really glad to get this. All right, guys, we've got everything packed in here, uh, and it wasn't really that difficult. We actually have a little more room Put the jacket in the bottom. We have the dry sack with our fire starting stuff. Of course, the tarp, gloves. We have our water bottle here. Uh, this is, takes up a little bit of room with the pot, but not too bad. Uh, we've got the fuel in here. Uh, in the top here, there's one compartment in that mesh, and I put most of the tools and some of the odds and ends, like the compass and the right and rain pad here. Uh, and then I can take my food and just set it on top. I love how this opens up. I mean, it's just like a duffel bag, and yet you can use it as a backpack. Uh, one thing I did, though, with the water filtration, because it's so many parts, I put the Sawyer Mini in this little compartment. And that is really one of the only outside compartments that this has. It has another one, but that has the actual covering that goes over this. So let's go ahead and we'll get this closed up. I had to actually release one of the straps, which made it easier just to open. But you can see that really comes from the back so really cool I like this pack in fact the more I'm messing with it the more I like it all right guys here is the bag and it's all decked out closed up got my handle here if I need to carry it that way but um, like it it's full but honestly I could put some more stuff in there if I had it not a whole lot but definitely enough and so you know, you don't want to go too crazy with them because you've got to carry them. So the REI uh, get home bag or bug out bag. And the total price was $805.60 tax included. So just to give you an idea, but really with REI, I mean, we were going somewhere that has outdoor gear. It was a little bit easier to find the right stuff than say Harbor Freight, Lowe's, Home Depot, places like that that we've gone. Even Walmart's not too bad, but the quality's low. This is just a more premium bag. May go in and do a ultimate bug out bag from REI, but I'm gonna have to save my pennies because it'll probably run about $2,500, but great bag. So guys, again, you find yourself without supplies, maybe you're out of town, maybe you're somewhere across town and you can't get home. Going to different locations, looking and seeing what different people offer will give you a lot of ideas. Uh, whether it's in the Dollar Tree, Walmart, or Target, and you might find some supplies there that might surprise you. And so we just thought that going to REI, we knew we could find whatever we wanted. It's just, we didn't know if we'd have enough money but ended up putting together a really good quality bag. And the staff over at REI, they were top notch, very polite. We really enjoyed the visit. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic.
That's one of the things that one of the things we really like to do is to go to a different store and find all the survival supplies. That's one thing we love to do is go to a store. All right, guys, we have shelter. Whoops, what was that? Out the supplies you need. And so we like to go to different stores and try to put together a loud saw. <laughs> You may find yourself in a different town, in a different area. You may, okay. Guess when it comes to a bug out bag or get home bag, it's really, okay. 